Hey everybody, welcome to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video I am going to show anyone that owns a PreSonus AudioBox USB audio interface, how to hook it up to your computer and how to configure it in Studio One Artist so you can get to yourself recording right away in your home studio. So this video is a snippet that comes from the new recording series that I did for PreSonus called Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy. The course runs about three hours long, so after you watch this video, if you wanna see the entire three hour course, go ahead and click the link in the description box below. You'll go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and you can purchase the course right there. That course takes you from the very beginning, from the time you get your audio interface at home, shows you how to register it on the PreSonus website, shows you how to download your software, Studio One Artist, and then most importantly, how to record a song from beginning to end, how to mix that song, and how to send it out and export it out of Studio One. So any any of you new uh, AudioBox USB users that want to learn how to record using Studio One in your new AudioBox USB, that course is absolutely for you, and this video comes right from that course. One other special note for a limited time only, if you click the link in the description box below and go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, when you check out and you purchase the course, Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy, if you use the coupon code PRESONUS25, Again, that's PreSonus25, right at the checkout page. It's gonna take 25% off for a limited time only so you can get that course and you can start learning how to use Studio One Artist, your audio box USB, and how to record a song from start to finish. So this course is intended for the absolute beginner. So if you're someone who just came home with your new audio box USB and you're looking for a way and some instruction on how to set it up and how to use it, this course is for you. So once again, click the link in the description box below. Don't forget about the coupon code PreSonus25 and if you have any questions, you can hit me up at info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I'd be glad to help you and give you some guidance. So I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you guys all soon. Okay, welcome back. So in this section now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook up our audio box USB to our computer. And we're also gonna connect our speakers. If you're someone who has the ultimate uh, studio bundle package, you got your two uh, speakers here uh, as well. We're gonna hook those up and uh, show you how to do that. So the first thing you wanna do is we're gonna start with our audio box USB. So, on the audio box USB, before we hook anything up, there's a couple of things we want to do. First thing we want to do is on the back where the USB connector is, you may have a label that's covering that, uh, that connector and it'll ask you to remove the label. So go ahead and remove the label. I've already done that. And when we flip it around to the front here, let's take a walk through the front of the audio box USB so you see what you have here. So over here on the uh, left of the unit, we have our two combo jacks, uh, one and two. We have two inputs that can either be with an XLR cable, which we'll do in a later section, as well as an instrument cable to plug in an instrument cable, which we'll talk about again in a later section. Next to that, we have our 48 volt phantom power switch. We wanna make sure for this section that that is not pressed in, that it is pressed outward, so we're not, uh, we're not activating the 48 volts. Then we have our two uh, level input control, gain control for input one and input two. Let's make sure those are turned all the way down counterclockwise. Then next to that, we have a mixer uh, uh, encoder here. We want to turn that all the way down. We have our headphone jack, our headphone level we want to turn all the way down, as well as our main outputs for the volume going to our speakers. We want to turn that all the way down as well. So everything should be turned down. 48 volts should be uh, uh, not pressed in, so we don't activate that. On the back of the unit here, we have uh, just a few areas we have to talk about. We have the USB connection, which we're gonna do now. We're gonna connect our USB cable to this, and that is gonna go straight into the input on our computer. And keep in mind that when you hook up any audio interface, you don't wanna plug the USB into a USB hub. Rather, you wanna plug it directly into the computer if you can, you'll get better performance that way, for sure. Um, then we have two MIDI uh, jacks in and out here, which we're not going to use in this section, but this is for hooking up a MIDI uh, controller device if you had one. We do have our main left quarter inch left and right outputs that are going to go to our speaker, which we'll talk about in a second. And then lastly, we have our headphone jack, which we'll use a little bit later in, the, in this series. So the first thing we want to do is hook up our USB cable. So on my USB cable here that came with your package, I've already plugged it in directly into my laptop on one end, not into a hub, and then I'm going to connect the other side here like so, real simple. When you do that, you're going to see the power light. Uh, turn on. There is no power supply with the audio box USB. It is powered by the USB cable, which is nice to have one less cable you have to deal with, right? Second thing we're going to do is we're going to plug our left and right cables that came with our package, our two speaker cables here that came with our package. These are TRS or tip ring sleeve cables. We want to plug one into the left output and one into the right output. 
Okay, so the only thing that you should have plugged in at this point is your USB and your two speakers. Turn this back around, we'll set it on the table, and now we're gonna plug our speaker cables into our actual speakers. So now, if you have the two speakers here uh, that came with the package, we're gonna hook those up. If you don't have these, and you don't have studio monitors, you don't need to worry about this piece of it. You could just plug your headphones, if that's how you're gonna monitor what you're recording and what you're listening to, you could just plug your headphones into the back of the audio box USB, and you'll control the level of those headphones with the, with the encoder on the front here, okay? But for you, for people that Okay, everybody, welcome back. So in this section, we're going to uh, now launch Studio One for the first time, uh, now that you have it installed. So go ahead and launch Studio One here. And I'm going to take you through um, making sure that our Studio One sees our audio box, and we'll take a little tour of the start page here. So when you first launch Studio One, it's going to scan all the plugins that are on your system, whether it's the stock plugins or if you eventually add third-party plugins, you'll see that start up. But it boots up pretty quickly. So over here is the start page. This is the first thing you're going to see when you launch Studio One. And you can see at the top here, Studio One Artist, right here. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's take a, um, a tour of this page, okay? So over on the left-hand side, we have two tabs here. We have Create a New Song, which we're going to do in a later section. Or we can open an existing document or an existing song file, which we'll talk about a little later. Uh, beneath that, we have any recent files that if we if we opened up uh, sessions in the past, as you start to work with Studio One and you work on your session, when you shut down Studio One and reboot it, you'll see the most recent files that you worked on here in the list, so you don't have to navigate through your computer to find it, which is really good. Um, and then you also have a Songs tab here, so if you have a song, uh, it'll be here as well. Okay. Over in the middle here, we have an artist profile right here in the center where you see this little image here. You can add yourself a logo or your photo or whatever here if you want to do that. You just do that by clicking. Um, you want to add a photo, you just uh, click this little button here. And then you can go out to your desktop or wherever and you can add a photo there, which I don't have, but you can do that. Beneath it, it's going to have the name that the software is registered to. In this case, me, David Vignola. Um, you have an opportunity uh, if you want to put the genre of music that you're working on or you may want to work on a website address you can uh, put here as well so you can um, you know show off your website address if you'd like and then underneath that where it says built-in output this is what we're going to talk about now this is important so this right now shows that studio one is looking at the built-in well, let me cancel that the built-in output uh, the internal speakers in my MacBook Pro as our interface, which is not right. We need to change that. So we're going to come over here to this thing called Configure Audio Device. We're going to left click on that. And this is going to bring up a preferences window and it's going to bring us to the audio tab here. And we're going to walk through all these different sections later. But for right now, we want to be on the audio setup tab. And you can see here that we have an audio device tab and we have a playback device and a recording device. And right now it says again, built in output, built in input. It thinks the internal sound card to my computer is what's what we want to hook up. We don't. If you come over to the right hand side, there's a little drop down arrow. And because we plugged in our audio box USB 96, when you launch this as well, as long as uh, your audio box is hooked up via the USB cable, you'll see your audio box here. Or any other interfaces you may have. If you have two or three audio interfaces hooked up to your computer, it will see all three. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to choose the audio box USB. And it's going to make it the playback device and the recording device. Now, in this series, that's what we want. We want these both to be the same. But there could be times down the road as you expand your studio where maybe your recording device is the audio box USB, but your playback device is a different interface. And that's a little bit more advanced uh, studio setup, but the, it gives you the option to be able to have uh, studio one play your audio once you record back through one device while recording on another which is which is really nice nice feature but for what we're doing here and most times you're always going to have the audio interface in our case the audio box usb be the same for playback as recording okay so that's the first thing we want to do now down here we have this thing called device block size sample rate input and output latency and without getting too technical, let me just explain where we want to set this. It defaults at 128 samples, and that should be sufficient. Depending on your computer, if you drop down this arrow, it's going to give you a bunch of sample sizes. Okay, 128, 256 is kind of right in the middle. This has to do with a lot with your internal computer processor speed and the way it kind of handles the audio as you start recording. The general rule of thumb is this. When you're recording audio into your computer, 
you want to set this as a starting point around 128 or 256 samples, okay? You can leave it at 128. When you're mixing audio and we start using lots of plugins to mix our song, which we'll talk about in a future section down the road, you're going to want to raise this up a little bit to maybe 1024 or 2448 samples because that will allow, uh, the, it'll free up some computer resources to be able to handle all the plugins. And we'll talk about that later. So just realize what that, what that is. And for now, just leave it at 128. Our sample rate is uh, 48.0. Our input and output latency. Basically what latency is, is the time that it takes from, let's say, when you're recording, let's say, an acoustic guitar, from the time that you strum that guitar, it goes out the guitar cable into your interface through Studio One, back out of Studio One, into your interface again, and into your headphones. The, the, the time that it takes from the time you hit that chord or that guitar to the time you hear it in the headphones, that time difference is called latency. And when it's in this, uh, you know, small 4.94 milliseconds and it's way down in the milliseconds, it's super fast. So you can't audibly hear the difference. However, depending on your computer processor and some of the specs of your computer, this is where the device block size will help you with latency. So, for example, if you're recording an acoustic guitar singing into a microphone and you sing into it and then you hear a delay in your headphones and it's kind of weird, you can't play and you can't sing because you hear that delay, that latency is because this device block size is normally set too high and you want to lower that. And by lowering that, and let's take a look here, at 128 samples, our input latency is 4.94 milliseconds and the output latency is 4.69. Watch what happens when I change this down to say 32 samples. You see how the latency drops to 2.94 and 2.69 milliseconds respectively? That makes the latency smaller so or the delay shorter. So if you start off at 128 samples and you're recording and you're hearing a delay in your headphones, the very first thing you do is come into your device block size and lower it by one click and play again and see if the latency goes away, the delay goes away. If you still have a problem, lower it a little bit more and it'll eventually go away to the point where you're playing and you're hearing it instantaneously or your ear perceives this instantaneously is always going to be some slight delay, but the human ear won't be able to hear it because it's so quick. Okay. So that's what the device block size will do in a nutshell. It just increases or decreases the latency uh, that you have with studio one. And a lot of it is dependent on your particular computer, but most times for recording 128, 256, that's usually going to get you where you need to go. But if it doesn't, you know what to do now. Okay, so that's what goes on here. So once we've chosen our playback device and our recording devices, our audio box USP, we're just going to hit OK down here. Okay, and now you'll see down here it says audio box USB. Okay, so if it doesn't, again, click on audio device, just repeat the process.